24 material item and free of charge item okay now these other things are also item types in other contexts right they're not item types in the sales order context that's all It is. In fact, uh, we get it all the time when we get books for, uh, you know, publishers send us books. Right? It's a sales order, except that it's free. They, they send you an invoice, zero price. Yeah. You get it. That extended conditions. Yeah. Yeah. Could you go back Which one? This one? Yeah, after you're done. Okay, so you're saying because you received the sales uh, a sales invoice, and even though it's zero, it's still counting as a. Or you could have something, you know. Or it could it could it could range from zero to whatever yeah, price. Okay. The price is zero. Or if you buy a computer, I give you a printer free. Right? Yeah. So it's part of the sales order. Price is zero. Okay. So here a question about this. See the prior scheduling agreements that occurred from some prior sales order. Right? So you're only shipping against a prior scheduling agreement. There's no need for another sales order. Right? So, you so that you're saying newly created when you ask the question can be created. Created, yeah. Because that sales order is not being created. I was thinking you can copy and paste from the previous sales order. You know what I'm saying? But not from a scheduling agreement. From a previous sales order, yes. Plus, uh, that's a standing sales order all the time. Yeah, it's already there. Okay. Okay, 25 also I have a doubt. Okay, so this is about schedule lines and I, you know, uh, which of the following scenarios would require the explicit creation of schedule lines on a sales order? See, normally you don't, yeah, A is definitely right. I actually saw you have this highlighted. Yeah. sentence, so I thought it's only took a look at this highlighted sentence. Oh, I'm, I have a doubt about this. Okay. I, I thought this is not right, but so, okay, so the customer orders two materials in one order and specifies a different delivery date for each material. Yeah, because we needed to have two split schedule lines when we create sales order. Yeah. So we need to have schedule yeah, lines. Yeah, we have to. So if, if you create a sales order and if you switch to schedule uh, line, and uh, then in, in, in this case, if you are required to deliver in two batch. No, but it's not, these are two different items. Two, Right? There are two materials and each yeah. material has a different date. But the total quantity of each material is going on the same day. Oh, I see. So material 1, 30 oh, units on December 1. Item. Material 2, 20 units on December 3. Right? Oh, yeah, you, you're right, you're right. So in this case, I don't think a schedule line is required, but I was doubtful. Why would that be the same sales Why not? I want 10 pens and 20 pencils. Yeah, but the B option doesn't mention that there's a one series order for both of the things, right? It says two materials. Two materials in one order. And specifies a different date for each material. Then, then you definitely need, if, if the dates are different, then you definitely need schedule lines. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, then A, a is right. But a is right, yeah. This is the let me take a look at the system. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at the, 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 the structure of a sales order, you have your header, then you've got the items, and within each item there's a schedule. Uh, no, no, no. The question is about explicit creation of schedule lines. That is implicit. If, you, if you've got one item, 50 units, and you don't say it's split it, then you don't have to go and create a schedule line. No, but you still have to, I thought, within, even if you have one order with with one delivery date, the, the delivery date is, can you can you not have a schedule line and just on the item row put a, a, a date for delivery? Yeah, that would be like a schedule line, right? Yeah, that, that's what he's researching. But the point is, let's say your order has only one item, mm -hmm. you've got a delivery date for the order, and you just put a quantity for the item. Then you so don't create any schedule line explicitly. That schedule line gets created implicitly. But then that means these will still require you to create delivery in schedule lines because of the different delivery. 
We have to see, yeah. Uh, professor, <laughs> yeah. I just have one question, right? You have a sales order, and you just have one, uh, the item is delivering like whole quantity in just like the same day. So that's a one schedule line, right? It's, it's a schedule line, right. Uh, Even though it's just a one item. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, I said when do you require the explicit? That is implicit. That schedule line is implicit. You don't have to go and do anything. Yeah. Already there. It will be there. The system would be treated as a schedule line automatically. The here it is. Yeah. When do you have to go and actually do something to create it? Okay. So in this case, I am doubtful. I mean, I mean, if there's only one option, then you pick eight. If there's one, you would pick eight. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah, but I think it's useful for us to know what the, the correct thing is the for this. Question is in this same condition. If you say it's two, then you pick eight. <laughs> Can I just go back to Figure 4 and ask what would in house production and external procurement be for the item? This is in, uh, in MRP, right? For each material, you indicate what type of material it is, yeah, right? This is in MRP. This will be in, M in, it's used in MRP, and you'll specify in the material master procurement type, and there you say, okay, but that's not relevant for SD, mm -hmm. okay? In SD, when you're creating it in the item, each line item, you can say whether it's a material item or free of charge item. Yeah. I took a look at in the, in the in the system. It looks like if you have sufficient materials on hand for both materials, then when you create sales order, the schedule line will be automatically created based on your delivery time. But the two items can't have different yeah, dates. Yeah, then it will be automatically created. Then you don't really have to I don't really understand the meaning here explicit. So it just means you need to specifically input the time. Right. So, okay. No, no. See, suppose I have 500. So take the first case. Right. I want 500 units and I want yeah. them in two different. So then I have to go and split it, right? Yeah. And say 250 on this date, 250 on that date. So that is explicit creation. Okay. Right. But then uh, for the case B, I just did a test in the system. If you have two different materials, and if you have enough materials on hand, if you don't have enough material on hand, you have to input the planned delivery time. But if you have enough materials on hand, then the system will automatically create uh, just schedule lines for both items based on the delivery time. So you can specify yes. a delivery date on, yeah, 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 on yeah. the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's automatic. So you don't really have to it's create schedule lines. Right. So you just put the. So that means there is a provision to enter the date on yeah. the line. Yeah. yeah. For okay. which line? Against the item. For each item. For each item, you on can the, enter on the item row. Not it, it's not an item line. I mean a schedule line. For line. each item in the sales order, you have one row, uh -huh. and then for each item in the schedule line. You have one row. Okay, so you're saying on the on the item line you can put a date. On the item line, not really on the item line, but on the sales order, you have a schedule. Yeah, uh, on the sales order for each item you have a delivery date, and then if you have sufficient item on hand, then this delivery date will also be automatically put into the schedule line. Okay, but in this case you have two different delivery dates. Yeah, yeah. So each yeah. item has a different delivery right. date. It's, it's okay, but for each item, you just input the delivery date, right? On the item row itself, yeah. not on the schedule line row. For the item row, not on the schedule line row. So then you don't explicitly create a schedule line. Item, right? The item row is different from the schedule line row. Okay. They have different user interface. Okay. okay. But then like the item is same, so... Then, like, it would take just the one delivery, first delivery day itself, and then it would say, like, okay, yeah, I'm shipping out everything on the first delivery day itself. No, but there are two different items, right? right. Each one you want on different days. Okay, yeah. Okay. So, A is the correct answer. For B, you don't have to explicitly create. But, of course, that could be ambiguity. What exactly do you mean by explicitly create? It's just a word I made up, so. <laughs> I'm angling for a job with SAP, I think, with all this stuff. <laughs> they love me. Yeah, on, on, on the sales order, actually, for the uh, delivery date, you can see this information in two places. 
the first place is for all items. You have a required data rate day. The order header yeah, day. Yeah, and then for each item, you have a you know first data rate day. So in the default case, the required data rate day will also be the first data rate day. So change it. Will be copied. But in some cases, if you don't have anything on hand, you have to change. Okay. Okay. Uh, so here, you know, initially, how does it calculate the the date? Right. The customer says, you know, there's a requested date. The system says it couldn't be met. Obviously, it got that by backward calculation. Right. From the date the customer requested, calculated backward and found that it cannot be met. So in that case, to propose a date, it will do forward calculation. Starting from today, this, 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 and that's the earliest date at which I can deliver. That's forward. Backward and forward scheduling. Okay. Uh, 28 incompletion log is what tells you that uh, you know something is missing. So you try to save it. The system will come up with the incompletion log that says you didn't you didn't give the soul to party, for example. Okay. Uh, sales orders can sorry become become customer independent requirements in MRP. I thought you you're asking for like can become purchase requirements in MRP or production requirements. Oh, they are the <laughs> right, right. That's uh, ambiguous, but uh, one one possible answer is customer independent requirements. Yeah. That's just the term that MRP uses to call explicit sales orders that you have. Uh, okay, uh, 20, 30, under which conditions can an availability check be triggered for a sales order? These two conditions. D and E. It's not for the uh, material. It's not said in customizing for the material. Not in customizing. It's said in the material master. Right? So this is an this is just a field in the material master. It's not done at the stage of customizing. Okay. Yeah. I understand E, but D, I thought A would be the one. No, in the transaction you have to. Yeah, in the transaction you can customize. Not for the specific customer. This is your here. You're saying for for the particular material, when is an availability check performed? Right. It has nothing to do with the customer. No, I thought you can also set it so that for every time a particular customer orders, this, it doesn't matter which material. Just check all the material, make sure they are ready. Whatever they order. Is it? I don't, know, I'm yeah. <laughs> I don't see that as uh, as a possible option, but in case you've come across, I thought. So when you say for the for the transaction, it's saying for any sales transactions or for the specific transaction with that customer. For, for specific transaction of the material, maybe. Right, or for all sales transactions, you must perform an availability check. Yeah, it's not for material. All sales transactions you perform. Okay, or you say only for, uh, you know, the material master may say for this material it has to be triggered, right? So these are the two things that control uh, uh, ATPs, availability checks, right? Only sales orders have scheduled lines. Okay, picking lists are created from transfer orders, not from transfer requests, right? Picking list is the document that the warehouse uses to go and pick out the materials physically. For which one? Sales 31. Sales order, right? 31 sales order. That's the only one with scheduled lines. Right? So transfer orders are the basis for picking lists, not transfer requests. Right? Because transfer request is only a request. Only when it's converted into an order is it going to be executed. Yeah. No. It's associated with outbound, but the actual picking list will be created based on transfer orders. So you've got a bunch of transfer orders, right? And then you create a picking list saying, oh, I've got to pick up all these hundred things 
What's the best way for me to pick it up? The outbound delivery is it a document? Yeah, document. Outbound delivery is always a document. Then, is it like when you create a document, it will say to you like these are the uh, things which would be needed to ship out, so you create a shipping list from that? No, 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 no. It's from the transfer orders. Transfers are also that. Transfer. See, picking list picking is a warehouse operation. So, the outbound delivery creates a transfer requirement. And then the transfer order. becomes a transfer order and then it gets picked okay see picking is a warehouse operation and that is determined by explicit operations that the warehouse has to perform and those are transfer orders right of course it was all caused by outbound deliveries that's fine but this is the actual document based on which picking lists will be generated okay See, for example, suppose you created an outbound delivery and that ended up creating a transfer requirement, but you never converted that into a transfer order. But then you're not going to go and pick it. You're going to pick it only after the order has been created. Okay, under what conditions transfer requirement? Well, if it's under warehouse management. Same thing. Yesterday also we spoke about mm -hmm. it a couple of times. Right? So you've got an outbound delivery, which means you're saying I'm going to pick from a particular, uh, sorry, I'm going to satisfy it from a particular storage location. If that storage location is not under warehouse management, then there's no need for any warehouse stuff. There's no need for a transfer requirement, transfer order, nothing. Right? Then you're saying, well, it's somewhere, I'll just go manually pick it up. It's outside of the system. Okay? So that's why. Okay? Uh, so here we're looking at, you're in the process of shipping an item against a sales order. You have created an outbound delivery. Again, you have initiated the process. And just after creating the outbound delivery, you look at the stock requirements list. Okay? And then you post goods issue and then look at the stock requirements list. What is the difference between these two lists? The item would be gone, right? The item is gone. You, re you reduce your requirement. Reduce the requirement. See, when you as soon as you create an outbound delivery, and then you look at the stock requirements list. It will tell you, I've got 50 units on hand and I've got a requirement for this particular outbound delivery of 20 units. Okay, So it will show you 50 on hand, but it will also show you a requirement for this outbound delivery because you've created the outbound delivery. Right? The system has to track that I need pieces to satisfy that. It will be shown in the stock requirements list right? as a pending delivery, so to say. Not really pending delivery, but materials needed to meet that delivery. And then once you post goods issue, that will go away. Stock will also reduce. Right? So there will be two different things that will happen there. Two different changes that you will see. Okay. So which two accounts are affected in a goods issue against, against the sales order? This, uh, you don't see this information in the sales order chapter itself. But in financial accounting, we spoke about it. In financial accounting, when we were talking about accounts receivable, we spoke about this. So the, the things affected are stock and stock change accounts. Stock change account is basically when production finished materials and put it, you know, it's it's that, that account. Stock change account. Okay, but that doesn't make sense. No, this will get uh, posted later on when you uh, when you actually get the, uh, the invoice. Okay, so you credit stock? Right, you credit stock and debit stock change. So no, 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 no. You will uh, credit stock. Okay, credit stock and debit stock change, right? And then when you get revenue, stock that change is a what? It's a revenue account. Stock change is a it's a profit loss account. It's a profit loss account, right? For 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 the year, what what you produced? Okay. Okay, I thought you would have the equivalent of a GRIR account, but because I know GRIR is. This is what that account is. You could think of it like that. You could think of it like that. Because this will get reversed once you, uh, once you invoice the customer. Okay. So some some kind of a temporary account there. Okay. So which accounts are affected when a billing document is generated against a delivery? Okay. So this is important here. Okay. I'm saying revenue, of course. Right, you build the customer, so you've got the revenue, you might not realize it, 
but it's there. But what's important is, you know, in some context, of course, the, the uh, correct proper answer would be to say revenue and accounts receivable, right? Because it has now become accounts receivable. You build the customer. But sometimes they also refer to this as customer account, right? So instead, in the, in the multiple choice, suppose you see an option that says the two accounts affected are revenue and customer. You would select that option. Right? Because when they say customer, they are really referring to the customer's accounts payable, accounts receivable account, sub ledger account. Okay. So they just customer. Yeah, they may just say customer. I've seen that in the book quite often, they do that. Okay. I thought it's, it's balanced transaction, right? So both of those things are both revenue accounts, will be credited in the book. So I thought the answer would be, um, now, based on the previous answer, it would be the revenue or accounts receivable and the stock change. So that your, you, credit the, you, you, you credit the receivable or the, the specific customer receivable and now debit the stock change. No, here it's, see here it is, you, you earn $500 of revenue. And the five hundred dollars have now become accounts receivable, so it's balanced in itself. No. Yeah. This this transaction is balanced by itself. Accounts receivable is five hundred, revenue is five hundred, balanced. Okay, but that's but that's that's when you create the billing document. What you're describing is when you get the payment. No. no. Billing document is generated. Yeah. No, you haven't got the payment yet. Yeah. Here you haven't. You just sent the invoice. That's it. Okay. So what are you debiting? You credit revenue, debit accounts receivable. No, sorry. Credit accounts receivable, debit revenue. That's it. What what increased? Uh, accounts receivable is an asset. It increased. Debit accounts receivable, credit revenue. That's it. What debit? Yeah, it's an asset, right? Accounts receivable is an asset. It increased, so you debit it. Accounts receivable increased, so you debit it and credit revenue. That's it. When an, when an asset increases, you debit it, right? That's all you're doing. Okay, 36, uh, we've seen that. 37, which feature of SAP document flow? That's important. You know, the document flow feature is very important, so you should definitely uh, remember that. Right? And SAP has, do where else have we encountered document flow in this, in our course? The, we, no, in this course, we haven't encountered in those contexts. Plan maintenance. In enterprise asset uh, management, there we have encountered document flow. No, not, not just workless. Here we are talking of document flow. Document flow is, let's say you completed an entire sales process, right? from you, or let's say, put it differently. Let's say there is a sales order. The customer placed a sales order, and uh, you've done some of the steps, right? Let's say you created an outbound delivery, you've done the picking, but you haven't actually sent it out to the customer yet. Now the customer calls and says, where's my order? What's happening to it, right? So you can give the customer's sales order number, for example, and then it will show you all the related documents, backward and forward. Right, so it'll, you'll see the inquiry, you'll see the sales order, then you'll see the outbound delivery, you'll see the picking, which is the goods uh, issue posting, but then you won't see any further documents, so you can tell the customer, you know, it's, it's being shipped. Right, so you see all the documents on one screen. That is what is the document flow. Okay, it's not just the work list, it's the document flow, not workflow, but document flow. I think that's where your confusion was. Right, document flow is all the documents. 
okay how ad hoc requirements abap queries if you want to create ad hoc reports right that is some report which is not in the system already it's a customized report you want to create what is that on a major basis because it's a sales information system or no but the sales information system oh because they they have the about query with them right sir yes yes okay but if you see multiple choice and you see abap query that's that's what you have to say sir yes sir is just a broad thing of everything and of course you're right the abap query would sort of plug into the sas system so that's the the top top level right if you don't see abap and you see just sas then yeah, you select like uh once a val valid sales order is saved it affects which of the following work lists shipping, shipping work lists. Why? Because this order has to be shipped. At this point, it has to be shipped, right? You save the sales order; it's a valid order. So now they have somebody has to start the shipping process. That's the immediate next thing to do, right? That's the equivalent of the outbound outbound delivery. Outbound delivery, right? Yeah, but when when the when someone has to be billed as well, that will come later. Right, but it doesn't it say which one is first? No, this will not affect the, this work list at all. It, this will affect only the shipping work list as of now. Once you post so goods issue, the work list, right? no, not if you don't do any of the subsequent steps. If you created a sales order, save it. No, you have to first create the outbound delivery. Then they'll say, okay, this has to be picked. eventually of course you'll get paid also right but that's several steps down the road maybe i'm getting confused because it should have in my mind it should have said which it affects which of the following work this first okay that's a good way to say it no no because it's going to affect all of them but keep in mind if it's a service there's no picking yeah that's good <laughs> Did I? Okay. Thirty-eight. Which of the following modules has an interface with SD? Right. It's uh, warehouse management. Obviously, we know that manufacturing execution uh, is not an option, right? Because there is no direct connection there. Material planning, yes. because you know it, it customer independent requirements and so on and materials management because of the availability check and other things right because when you schedule your sales order you do an availability check and that information is going to come from the material services okay so that, that's all <clears throat> okay let's break for lunch come back in an hour okay and then we'll discuss the other one the uh enterprise asset management